All right, so A, B, C. How many of you have heard about this? All right, good. Okay. It's really funny, I have to say, when I, I just came from Chile, um, they don't have anything because of the autism there. So it was absolutely amazing to have to work with a translator because this is a completely new language. They have no language to, dis to use to translate ABA technical terms. And so we were constantly describing. And you know, in English, we say ABC because that's our first three letters and we make a whole thing on that. Well, it's different letters in Spanish. So you don't like get to say ABC in Spanish. <laughs> so we had to change it. In the, so it's, it, was, uh, it was really fun. Anyway, so Cooper, Heron, and Hubert came out in 1987 after 20, 40 years of research have been done, starting with Skinner. Um, about behavior and, and how do we understand, how do we analyze, how do we know how to change, how to improve, how to teach, um, using this aspect of applied behavior analysis. It came out of experimental behavior analysis because it took a lot of experimenting and trying and then we decided to start applying it. And so people who are applied behavior analysis are those that are practitioners working out in the field, experimental behavior analysts are the ones that work in the clinical setting and lab settings to experiment on new strategies. And so we get um, a lot of the terminology we, we use that was agreed upon. It's kind of like the bio of applied behavior analysis. So everything is kind of encompassed in this very <coughs> deceivingly simple <laughs> thing of ABC. And after I get through tonight, you'll see why it's deceivingly simple, because it's not simple at all. <laughs> it's very complicated and requires you to take data all the time just in order to understand what your antecedent behaviors and consequences are. So when you're looking at an antecedent, it's the specific thing that happens right before any behavior occurs. It's that stimulus that causes a behavior. And it's actually kind of difficult for people to really narrow it down to a specific thing. They try to describe to me in many paragraphs everything that happened before the behavior. And you just gave me a whole setting event. You didn't tell me exactly what the antecedent was right before the behavior. So it's, it's something that's often hard to recognize and why we have to take data and understand. In a teaching aspect, it is, it is your instruction that you provide to the student to then try to get a response from them. And that response is the behavior that occurs right after the antecedent. The difficult thing about behavior and understanding it is that its behavior is something that we talk about to each other, but until we define it and understand exactly what it is, we, we don't know that we're actually speaking the same language and that we have the same picture in our head. If somebody says to me, he tantrumed, well, there's 50 different types of tantrums somebody could be having. And so to me, I have, you can tell me tantrum, but then we need to go through, you know, is he laying on the floor? Is he kicking his feet? Is he throwing things? Is he screaming? Is he hitting? It? You know, is he engaging in self-injurious behaviors? All those sorts of things. We have to really define it so that everybody who's working with that kid understands what we're talking about, knows what it looks like, and can take data on it. 